Hey guys, it's Dan here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Content Editor tool using Surfer SEO. So just before we get into it, uh, basically the Content Editor tool is essentially a way of being able to scale out your content. Uh, so for example, if you have content writers currently that are writing content for you, obviously you have to prepare a lot of things for them, like the H2s, the type of content you want writing, you know, all, these, all this kind of stuff, and all this criteria how you want your articles to be created. And this can be very time consuming, having to do this from article to article and send it over and manage it and all the other stuff. Um, I'm going to show you how quickly scalable it is to kind of create an order for, you know, someone to create an article for you and how seamless it is kind of watching them do it, getting it back and then kind of meeting the criteria without you really having to do anything that you previously would have done. Um, so for example, all you wanted to do is go to the content editor tab up here and then you want to enter in a keyword. So for example, from the first one, we'll do the same thing. We'll do tennis court maintenance. So this is basically the kind of... Um, almost like the specifics of what your article needs to be. So for example, if you were in a uh, in the dental niche and you wanted an article writing about like, you know, top five dental services, you'd write that keyword into there. So for example, if ours is tennis court maintenance, if that's our service, we'll pop that in. And then just go to select location and obviously select where you want it to be. As I mentioned on the last video, you actually have uh, specific locations within a country, which is really, really great. But if you want it to be a nationwide term, just select your country. We're gonna do that here for United Kingdom. And then you just wanna press create on that. So this is just going to load up at the bottom. Uh, basically, it does take about 20 to 30 seconds to fully load up. Obviously, it needs to pull in all the keywords and everything for you to be able to use. Uh, so don't be alarmed by that. You need to wait for that bar down there to complete, which is being done now. Then once it's done, all you need to do is actually select your keyword down there. So that's going to take you through to this screen. Uh, just to give some explanation, what this does is it actually pulls in um, content ideas and kind of content themes from articles that are ranking currently for that keyword. So it's actually given the top 10 rankings for Tennis Got Maintenance here. And it's ticked off five that it feels are a good fit. Now, you can actually change this. You can take uh, some off if you don't feel like they're relevant. For example, say you have a, a search term and an eBay or a Gumtree link pops up. You feel like, you know, that's not going to have any information about it. You can obviously get rid of that. So obviously by just ticking these, that will get rid of or, or add them on. Uh, but what we're going to do, because we feel like all of these are relevant, we're just going to take all them nine. But obviously, if you want to, you can add some in and take some off. And it's very customizable for uh, what content you want to be pulled out from there. So we're going to tick all them, press save changes on that one. That's going to do that for us. Then down here, what it's done is it's got an average of the word length. So as you can actually see here, it's got 838 to 600, oh sorry, it's 964 words is the recommended amount that, uh, you know, these guys are using for their articles specifically. Uh, so what we can do is obviously change that if we want to. Say we want to do a skyscraper approach and say, you know, we want 1,000 words doing. Uh, you can just add that in there and that will actually change the amount that is kind of required to be written from your content writers. Uh, so it's very easy to determine, you know, how many, how many words you want written in there, but, you know, it gives you the average as well, which is a really nice thing. Um, and then obviously that's all done for you there, which is fantastic. Uh, you've obviously got other tabs here, which kind of show headings, paragraphs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you know, you don't really have to worry about them too much. They're all just there for you to uh, to do. So obviously you've got kind of at least four paragraphs, you know, uh, three to sixteen bold words. These are things that kind of are there as a kind of, they're almost like the um, the default settings. And you can you can obviously inform your content writers to ignore these if you don't feel like images are important. You know, you might want to add them in yourself, add in the bold words. But yeah, don't worry too much about these four tabs here. They're kind of just the default default settings. Uh, the main concern is obviously making sure that your keyword, that your uh, amount of words that are in that uh, in that box are actually filled in prior to uh, going forward. So once that's done, what it's going to do is it's going to pull in the primary keywords. So obviously in this sense, it's tennis court maintenance, then the individual words tennis court and maintenance because they're kind of uh, what you want to rank for. They're the main keywords. And then amazingly, it actually pulls in secondary keywords from the articles up here. So from the actual content that's currently ranking which is just brilliant because obviously if you need suggested keywords and things to add into your article, you can spend hours, literally hours going through different, uh, you know, content, um, content keyword uh, tools and finding different selected terms, but everything is already in here for you and it makes life so much easier. So you can literally just add them on or get rid of them. Uh, clicking on them will get rid of them or pressing add term will actually give you a massive list here of you know, suggested keywords like tennis court surfacing, for example, is perfect. It actually shows you how many searches that particular keyword gets per month as well. So it's really, really handy, guys. It makes things so much easier for you. But it's worth considering that actually you don't want to add in all of these because, um, you know, some keywords might not be relevant. So you don't want to go crazy and be like, right, let's get all of these in. Only really add them if you feel like they're relevant. For example, Surrey there. I mean, you may have um, a dedicated page already for Surrey um, that you may want to actually internal link to. So you could add that in if you wanted to do that. But again, because it's a location-based thing, and if you wanted it to be a kind of nationwide page, not really mention too many locations, you really don't have to add that in. It's completely up to you, and it kind of just gives you a good uh, a good guideline, really. So, for example, we're going to go through quickly now and think, okay, tennis court repair, that's absolutely perfect. Uh, tennis court resurfacing, that's under maintenance. Uh, the cost of tennis court resurfacing, perfect. Uh, tennis court cost, 
You could say maybe it's not specifically about maintenance, but it's a good keyword to get in, so we'll throw that in as well. You know, you could determine this based off your own logic of, uh, you know, your industry and your niche and add in as many as you want. But it's just so great, we feel, you know, that obviously all the secondary keywords are added in there from the articles that are currently ranking. Because uh, A, you know, it, it gives you so many more ideas, but B, these are, these are content keywords that are really, really proven that Google likes and Google wants to rank. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's proof in the pudding that the, the top 10 really up here are using those keywords throughout their articles. So... I mean, it's only going to do you a world of good, including in as many as you can. Uh, you've got prominent terms there as well, which obviously kind of bring in. So these are kind of prominent terms, again, surrounding the keywords. And then other terms that you can also add in or, or terms that, you know, may be worth the content right looking at adding in here and there, like repairs, for example, contamination comes under maintenance, all these keywords. Um, condition is another great one. So, you know, it's, it's fantastic that they've got all them in there. Uh, scrolling down, you've actually got topics and questions to answer, which again is, is fantastic. So, you know, they already come up with these ones already for you with the search volume as well. So how do you maintain a tennis court? Um, how much does it cost to maintain a tennis court? These are essentially commonly asked questions by, um, you know, whoever's interested in that product or service and kind of asking what, what that is in Google. So, you know, these are, yeah, they're fantastic to get into your article and they're just so good that they're already there for you. It saves you, you know, a heap of time. And if you do have any other ideas, you can, you know, add them into here by just pressing, uh, I'll just come off it to show you, press add question or topic. And then you could say, you know, say if, um, I don't know, so say, uh, does, does the color of your tennis court, you know, affect maintenance prices or something like that? I mean, to be honest, I don't think many people would search that, but as an example, you know, what I'm trying to say is you can add your own ones in. If there's a specific thing that you want adding in, you can just add it in there and press enter. So that's available for you too. Uh, finally, the final section is the notes section. Uh, very important because obviously if there's specific things that you want to tell your content writer to do or to not do, these can all be added into here. So say for example, you know, I mean there's no sections above saying about kind of internal linking or anything along those lines or embeds. So maybe you could say, you know, uh, embed one of our YouTube videos, something like along those lines. You could say, um, you know, um, internal link. Uh, sorry, internal link to, you know, a specific page. So obviously an example there. Basically the things that you kind of want to um, let them know to do as an addition that aren't currently on the, the system here. Uh, another one, obviously, as I said earlier, is the, these tabs here, the paragraph and bold words and images, all that kind of stuff. Uh, say, for example, you didn't want them to bold any words and obviously the requirement says, oh, please do three to 16 bold words. You could just say, you know, uh, don't worry about the bold word section or don't worry about adding in bold words or something along those lines. Basically to just... Uh, let them know this section says for you to do this, but you know, just don't, you don't have to follow those guidelines because you know, you may choose to do that outside of the article's time or you may not be too worried about bolding words right now or whatever the reason may be, just kind of specify the things that you feel are important that they need to know prior to them creating the article. Uh, so basically what that's done, so just to kind of run through all of that, what I've done there is I've essentially added in my keyword, obviously, of the, uh, the article that I want creating. And what this software has done amazingly is it's brought in all these kind of websites that are ranking for that keyword, uh, brought in loads of terms and loads of keywords and loads of questions, etc. that, you know, are around that keyword. And then what, you, what you've then got is actually is an idea and, and a template of how many words that person needs to write. And all of that is there for them ready to be created. You don't have to kind of uh, sit down forever and be like, right, I want you to do this, this, this per article. I mean, that process, even through describing it slowly, takes, what, like five minutes or so? Um, and then obviously you've got kind of an article there with so many ideas, so many keywords and all kind of targeted keywords too, which is crucial uh, for your content writer to create. So once that's all done, all you need to do is press finalize customization and it takes you to this page. Uh, now, initially, again, I was quite confused at like, you know, what is this? Do I need to write this or, you know, what does this mean? But basically what this page is that it takes you through to is actually for the content writer. Uh, and that might seem kind of surprising. You might be like, well, why, you know, is that, why is it taking me to this page? Blah, 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 you know, kind of interested in kind of what that means. And I'm going to run you through that now because it's very, very simple. Um, so obviously when I'm on this page, I can add uh, content if I'd like to. Of course I can. I'm going to get rid of that kind of uh, sample thing. And I'm going to start off with something like, um, I don't know, like tennis court maintenance uh, is, a, is a crucial factor, you know, when owning a tennis court. So obviously I've wrote that in and it shows that I can do because I've gone through to the screen and I've done it. But that's not the whole point. That This the whole page isn't for you. As I said, it's for the content writer. Um, so what all this stuff is, is it basically gives the content writer a guideline of how to create the content based on the specific information that you've just provided. Uh, so for example, at the minute, we've only got 15 words out of 1,000. Obviously, we specified 1,000 words or a little bit more. So they kind of have to reach that goal. And when they do, it'll give you a big tick. Uh, down here, you've got the headings, paragraphs, you know, those kind of default settings that I mentioned earlier. So let's not worry too much about them right now. 
And then down here is actually the usage of the keywords that you've selected. So obviously with tennis court maintenance being the primary keyword, it's saying to use that, you know, at least 11 times throughout the article, obviously a bit more the better kind of thing, but that's kind of its general guideline of how many times to use it. And then for the secondary keywords, it's saying, you know, use them anywhere from like one to two to three to four times, you know, kind of randomly. Uh, so for example, tennis court repairs, it says so currently we've got zero out of one uses. But if I were to write in tennis court repairs, say I'm a content writer in this example, it shows that, you know, I've completed that task. I've used that keyword once. I don't have to mention it again. That bit's all done and we'll move on to another one. Uh, obviously writing that so it makes sense in an article. But the whole idea is that all of this section here gives the content writer a guideline of how to write the content. And all of that content is written in this section. Now, again, it seems confusing because you think, well, I'm in this section. How is the content writer going to get it? But all you need to do, literally all you need to do is press copy link to share here. And what that does is it gives a shareable link, as you can see here, a shareable link that can be accessed by your external writer without logging into Surfer. And this is absolutely unbelievable because you've got all of your information there ready for the content writer to create. All you need to do is copy this link and it copies to your uh, to your desktop or your browser and you just send that right over to the content writer and be like, here's the, here's the template, get that created and it updates in real time as if it's like a Google Sheet or something. It's, it's, it's just so, so intuitive and it makes your life so much easier. So if I just press copy link to share there, it's actually copied to the clipboard. And if I make a new tab and I copy and paste that in, this is what the content writer receives. is this URL and again, the exact same page. So without having to be signed into Surfer, without having to do anything externally, they've got all the specifications, all the requirements for the article to be written. And all they need to do is go ahead and write it. So as I said earlier, you know, mention one of the keywords, uh, tennis court repair, and that completely updates in real time, um, obviously showing that it's used that keyword there, which is fantastic. And to prove that it's in real time, I'll go back to our other tab. And as you can see, tennis court repair has been added. So everything literally works in real time. And uh, it's, it's so great because not only does it mean that the content writer themselves has a kind of uh, a system in place where they know exactly what they need to put into the article. But, uh, you know, the person who's ordered the article, so say, you know, you as a business or whoever it might be, you can rest assured that they're getting everything correct and you can literally see it being updated in real time and it's already there for you, very shareable and very easy. So it just eliminates, you know, any kind of the, the, uh, the time consuming elements of, of ordering content through anybody. It makes everything so much quicker. And uh, that's about it, guys. So, you know, they'll then create the article. Say, you know, they've added, you know, I don't know, 1,000 words and all that's completed. You know, they've got the word count ticked off. They've got all these keywords ticked off down here. They've added the questions in, you know, the questions to ask, answer, and add in some relevant terms. Your article is completely uh, surrounded about that topic and, and perfectly optimized for Google. And then it would just pop up here ready for you. You can literally go back into your account, go back into your orders, see the article created, and then obviously... Uh, do as you will with that. Upload it to uh, your blogs or you know your website as a money money page because this is going to be money page content. I mean, this isn't. This really doesn't have to be um, you know something that's ordered through Web Two's or whatever. You can use the best quality content writers you've got available to you. Uh, you you know it, the, the quality of the content will depend on the content writer that you create, not the actual service. Uh, if anything, the service is just providing you know uh, such a time consuming element. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, it's it's eliminating such a time consuming element because. You really don't have to worry about all the things you used to have to worry about. It's, it's very set and forget. You've got it done there and then the content writer does their business. So once you've got a good bank of content writers available to create content for you, this system is so scalable because you just get so many of these coming back. You know, they've got the shareable link. They're creating the content with all these guidelines down the side. It makes their job easier. It makes your job easier. And it's just a really, really win-win uh, system that's fantastic to use and very, very in intuitive. So uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video today. Hope you guys uh, learned something and obviously implement this into your content strategies. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.